Hey everybody, Ryan from Ryan Hockey Channel here. Alright, going to be going over the Colorado Avalanche 2021-2022 season preview. I know this isn't in alphabetical order now because I missed the Colorado Avalanche, but I'm catching up and going to be doing this one now. So, if you haven't done so already, hit that subscribe button, hit that like button, hit that notification bell, and also hit that share button. And also, make sure to let me know in the comments what you think, if you agree or disagree on what my view of this team's season is going to look like. Alright, let's get started. Alright, so this is who they added this year. They added Mikhail Maltsev in a 2021 second round pick from the New York Islanders for Ryan Graves. Uh, they signed Roland McEwen, one year signed for 50000 Darren Helm, I honestly thought he was playing in Europe or retired. I didn't even know he was still playing. Or, well, I knew if he was in Europe, but that was about it. I didn't know he was in the NHL still. But one year, $1 million. Stefan Mateau, one year, 750000 Dylan Sakura, one year, 800000 Jordan Gross, one year, 750000 Ryan Murray, one year, $2 million. Andreas Wingerly, I'm not sure if that's pronounced correctly. Wingerly, maybe. Uh, one year, $842,500. Curtis McDermott was acquired from Seattle for a 2023 fourth round pick. And Darcy Kemper was added from Arizona from Connor Timmons for a 2022 first round pick and a conditional 2024 third round pick. Or, honestly, that Kemper one is probably going to be the biggest one addition for them. But we'll see. Ryan Murray might be a good defensive addition. Curtis McDermott will definitely add some grit to the team. And he can play fourth line duty as well as defensive duty. Alright, subtractions. They lost Ryan Graves to the New Jersey Devils via trade. Patrick Nemeth went to the New York Rangers. Hold on one second, gotta get a cat down. He's rubbing on my microphone stand. Uh, Phil Grubauer signed with Seattle. Honestly, that was probably the most surprising loss. I think everybody expected him to re-sign with Colorado, then all of a sudden on day one of free agency, boom, went to Seattle. Especially after Seattle did really good picking their goaltenders. I was kind of surprised, but hey, it is what it is. Uh, pierre Edouard Belmar went to Tampa. Honestly, I think that one might be a painful one, too. Sheldon Dries to Vancouver. Liam O'Brien to Arizona. TJ Tynan to LA. Uh, Kyle Burroughs to Vancouver. Adam Werner to Calgary. Brandon Saad went to St. Louis. That one hurts the offense of death a bit. Uh, Dan Renouf went to Detroit. Michael uh, Vachoni went to Washington. And Matt Calvert retired. So, I mean, the biggest ones, definitely Grubauer is the biggest. Belmar, Graves, and Saad, I think, are big ones, too. But I think Grubauer is probably going to get the biggest one. But because they got Kemper, I think that has actually been wiped out as long as Kemper is healthy, of course. Uh, they re-signed Tyson Jost to a two-year, $2 million contract. Uh, Gabriel Landiscog, Landiscog was re-signed eight years, $7 million per. That's actually a fairly good price for what you get there. Uh, Kale McCarr, six years, $9 million. Uh, Jason Megna re-signed two years, seven fifty thousand, and Dennis Gilbert one year, seven fifty thousand. I think the nine million dollar contract they gave McCarr. I think he may be worth that at some point. I'm not sure that you want to do that as a second contract with the guy, but that is that or lose him, I guess. So you do what you gotta do. Salary cap situation: they are currently sitting at seventy nine million dollars. So. They have a couple million dollars in space. That's not too bad. Definitely does not hurt to have that little bit of wiggle room. Uh, after this year, it's probably not going to be existent after this year. Another cap, really? Hi, Blaze. All right, this is the forwards for this year, according to capfriendly.com. Of course, this is not based on who's actually made the team. This is just based on NHL contracts that they have. Of course, you got Miko Rotten, Landis Cog, and McKinnon. It's still amazing to me that McKinnon is the third highest paid forward on this team. Was the second highest last year, now third. So, you gotta imagine he's gonna ask for more in two years. But still, as of now, only $6.3 million for McKinnon. That is a steal of a deal. You have Andre Burkowski, Nazim Kadri, Valerie Nichushkin, Darren Helm, Stefan Mateau, and Kiefer Sherwood, all UFAs after the season. They have one RFA and Mikhail Maltsev. That's it. In the forward area. I haven't gone over the areas yet. That's just here. Now, Burkowski, I would be shocked if they did not re-sign him. Nazim Kadri, 
oh god, screw them again in the playoffs this year like he does every team he plays for in the playoffs. But still, I think they may want to keep him, but that may just depend on how his season and his playoffs go. We'll have to see how that one works out. Nichushkin, I think they'll keep Helm. I think they'll keep him. I'm surprised they gave him a million dollars, honestly. All right, let's see. On the defensive side, McCarr's shiny new $9 million contract for six years starts this season. Eric Johnson is on there. I'm sure he'll be injured at some point, and I'm not trying to make fun, but that's just the reality of Eric Johnson. Uh, Samuel Gerrard, his brand new contract he signed during the season last year is there. Devin Tays had an amazing year for Colorado last year. So, I mean... Their top four, I mean, you got Bowen Byram coming up right now, so he could be in the top four possibly. I'd see him more sheltered to begin with like he was last season a bit. Ryan Murray can definitely play that four, five, six role. Uh, Eric Johnson, if he's playing, could play the four, three, four role. I don't think he's a one, two anymore. Uh, Curtis McDermott, like I said, he could end up be, being a fourth line winger or, yeah, probably a winger. I wouldn't put him as center. Probably a winger just to have because you know what he's a good tough guy to have and protect guys like McKinnon who got his head taken off last year in that game against San Jose where he missed some games with a concussion and just didn't seem right the rest of the year after that so you might see him being used more in the event of stuff like that occurring I think a lot of teams have gotten slack on that and a lot of them have lost a few star players due to injuries from things that normally wouldn't have happened in the past. So, you might see guys like McDermott getting a little bit more of a push. Especially with someone like Tom Wilson running around the league. Then, of course, you have on the goalie side. Now, I'm not saying he's going to go after Tom Wilson. I'm just saying, if it was like the Rangers, they probably had a choice of McDermott or Reeves. Reeves has more of a history with him, so why the heck not? But still, I'm just saying as an example. There's other players in the league that do the type of stuff that Wilson does. Just as an example. Goalie-wise, you had Darcy Kemper and Pavel Francouz. And both are UFAs after this season. So, Kemper has a good season and is limited in his injury time. Hopefully, very, very limited. Then, yeah, same with Francouz because he missed all last season. So, hopefully, he'll be healthy. Then, of course, they have... Oh, God, I didn't realize they had Jack Johnson on a, on a professional tryout. Just no, Colorado. Just no. I'm sure even your fans are saying, please, God, no. Artem Anisimov, I guess he could still be a serviceable third, fourth liner, I guess. He's not the guy who looked like he had scoring potential in the past and just didn't amount to that potential. All right. On the non-roster forward area, Shane Bowers, a guy who might get a few games here this season, is RFA after this season. Alex Newhook, I have a feeling he's going to be starting the season on the team. They have John Luke Foodie down there too. Martin Kaut kind of needs to figure out his game at this point. Otherwise, he's going to be a throw-in for a trade at this point. Andreas Wingerly, or Wingerly, however he is pronounced, I'm not sure. But he's RFA after this season. Dylan Sakura, UFA. Nicholas Henry and Logan O'Connor, both RFAs. On the defensive side, Justin Barron. Huh. Maybe he might get a game tryout just to see. I doubt it, but I think they'll send him down for another year. I don't think he's quite ready yet. But they have Roland McEwen and Dennis Gilbert. And also Keaton Middleton, all RFAs. And Jason McDonald is a... UFA after this season. And on the goalie side, you have Jonas Johansson, who did play last year and didn't look terrible for them. Looked terrible for Buffalo, but no offense to Buffalo fans, it's not hard to look terrible with that team. And Hunter and Miska are both RFAs after this season. Alright, in the 2021 draft, this is how Colorado drafted. Uh, they actually had their first round pick this year. A playoff team actually keeping their first round pick. That's a miracle. Uh, Oscar Olison they picked at number 28. Then you can see the other three they picked, including a Taylor McCarr. Gotta wonder if he's related to another McCarr on this team. Maybe, maybe not. I'm not sure. Alright, this is how their draft picks look. They do not have their own first round pick next year. Their second round pick is a conditional pick. We'll have to see how the conditions work out. They do not have a fourth this year, but they have their own third, fifth, sixth, and seventh. 
Next year, they have their own first, second, third, fifth, sixth, and seventh. No fourth round pick. And then in 2024, they have their own first, second, a conditional third round pick that they could lose, and a fourth, fifth, and sixth round fourth fifth sixth and seventh round pick of their own so they're missing some picks like they're missing their first this year understandable kind of surprising they didn't lose their first round pick last year but it is what it is all right this is what according to cat friendly once again go check them out if you have any cap related questions they're a very good resource um this is what their lineups look in the depth chart area you yeah, have first line, this is unquestionable, this is definitely the first line. Landis Cobb, McKinnon, Rutten. I mean, McKinnon had a down year, it felt like. And in 48 games, he had 65 points. His goaltending was down. Or, not goaltending, wow. Goal scoring was down. So, there's that. But his playmaking did not seem to suffer much. But his shooting definitely did not feel like it was up to par of the last couple of years, at least. On the other hand, Miko Rotnin, his playmaking went down because of it, but his goal scoring went up. So, win-lose in that situation. And Gabriel Landis Cognar solid here at 52 points. On the second line, you have Burkowski with Kadri and Confer. Kadri's still not really producing along the lines they would expect from a second-line center. I mean, 32 points in every single game last year, 56 games. So... I feel like that wasn't good enough. And in the playoffs, he just really screwed up again. Burkowski, great year. 44 points in 53 games. Can't complain there. And Confer, I would not be surprised if you end up seeing Newhook playing there if he does well enough in camp and he shows well enough in the regular season. Raza right now, they have him fourth line center. But I can see him playing wing there, then moving Kadri over and putting him in center or moving Kadri down the third line. You never know. Uh, Nichushkin, right now, they have on the third line with Jost and Helm. And fourth line, Maltsev with Hook, Newhook and O'Connor. So, there's that. Newhook had three points in six games last year. See if he can improve upon that. I mean, he was a plus five. I mean, granted, this is one of the higher scoring teams, so it's not hard to be a plus on this team. But still, good to see that. That's a good sign. On the defensive side, you have Devin Taze with Kel McCarr. Okay, I can see that being a good pairing. I think they were... Were they paid to, paired together last year? It makes sense, because Taves is a pretty good two-way defender, and McCarr is a good offensive one. And not slouch defensively by any stretch, but he definitely is a very good offensive defender. And you definitely want to get someone like him more leeway by having a either two-way or a stay-at-home defender paired with him, so it makes sense. Samuel Gerrard with Eric Johnson is a second pair, according to Cap Friendly, and Bowen Byram and Ryan Murray on the third pair. Murray actually had 14 points with New Jersey last year in 48 games. Not terrible. And he wasn't known for offense anyway, so it's not surprising. Darcy Kemper last year, 10 and 11 with Arizona. So let's I bet you he's going to improve upon that. If not, he may end up being traded, and they may go for another goalie. Wouldn't be the first time Colorado's gone after a big name goalie and during the regular season. <laughs> Patrick Waugh. Sorry. And then scratches, they have Mateau, Sherwood, and McDermott. And for some reason I have a part of training camp on there. That's not supposed to be training camp. Those are PTOs. So those are there. Alright, in the minors, this is what they have. You can see Jason Megnan played games last year as well as Dylan Sakura, but those were with other teams. Uh, Martin Kelt played five games, no points last year. Jacob McDonald played 33 games for him last year, 33, uh, nine points. Uh, Jordan Gross played last year, seven games, three points. Keen Middleton played last year, as did Dennis Gilbert, three games each. Uh, Jonas Johansson, between Buffalo and Colorado, was five and six. And Hunter Miska played a few games, one and one. Uh, neither one is wowing me with the numbers, although the goals against average is not terrible for Johansson and that is probably because of his time in Colorado more than Buffalo but still leaves a lot to be desired all right non-roster players on the loan on the prospect and reserve list because I had to split this up because it was a massive list for these two pages uh, you have Oscar Olison who was actually already signed as is Alex Bocage 
Thank you, God. Let's see. This team, honestly, is, does not have a great amount of prospects at this point. But, I mean, they've been good for the last couple years. So, that means they've probably been trading away picks. So, it's not surprising. So, we'll have to see. I mean, there's only one first-round pick on this entire list. There are other ones. I mean, New Hook, obviously, is starting to play. Uh, Martin Kaut from 2018. He's kind of in the in-between Justin Barron I don't think he's quite ready yet to get there but soon enough I'd imagine he's going to get a shot so that's where we're at with the prospects with this team I mean here's the top prospects from what I found Bowen Byram of course two points in 19 NHL games last year cut down with injury Alex Newhook had 16 points in 12 NCAA games he was definitely very good for them for the NCAA this year Nine points in eight NH AHL games and three points in six NHL games. So I feel New Hook's getting a shot in the NHL this year to start the season. Justin Barron, 31 points in 33 QMJHL games and four points in seven AHL games. So not not a slouch at all on the offensive area, obviously. Sampo Ranta, left winger, 31 points in 31 NCAA games, zero points in two NHL games, and seven points in 14 AHL games. So... That's another guy who might get a shot this year. And Martin Kaut, who he has passed in the rankings, evidently. Zero points in five NHL games and 16 points in 20 AHL games. He needs to figure it out because 2018 first round pick. Team's going to be patient for only so long before I say, hey, you know what? You want to take this guy off our hands for someone else? That's what's going to end up happening if he doesn't figure this out sooner rather than later. Others mentioned his top prospects, Jean-Luc uh, Foody, Logan O'Connor, uh, Justice Anunan, a goalie, Oscar Olison, and Shane Bowers. Now, this team is going to be a contending team. Yes, they lost quite a bit in the offseason. I will agree there. They definitely did lose a bit. I wouldn't say they have as much of a clear-cut contender position in the West as they did last year. And... I, obviously, I'm picking them to p finish top of their division. They're going to be a top-tier team easily. I mean, as long as that first line stays healthy, of course. That's a big thing. And, honestly, their additions are not are pretty good. I mean, Kemper is definitely... A, uh, honestly, I, I think Kemper is a better goalie than Grubauer. Just from the potential range. Because Kemper has just had better numbers last couple of years. Excuse me, I need a drink. I mean, Grubauer's numbers, it definitely helps him being on a team like Colorado, but he's still not a slouch of a goalie. I definitely would want him on my team, and I don't blame Seattle taking him. Uh, I blame, honestly, Colorado for letting him go. That was kind of a stupid thing to do. All right, so that's what I got for you for the Colorado Avalanche. Hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, hit that notification bell. Hit that share button and let me know what you think in the comments. If you agree or disagree on this team being a contender, finishing top of their division, let me know what you think. Let's talk some Colorado Avalanche hockey. Alright, I will see you all next video. Bye everybody.